Hey, what's going on everybody? Jay's Two Cents here, and we're gonna to talk today about a topic that I've touched on quite a bit in the past, but I've never actually done a dedicated video to it, and I think that it deserves one, because when it comes to selecting the components for your water cooling loop, each individual component has its own set of perimeters that can make things much more complicated as it is. For instance, if you wanted a 360 millimeter radiator, you're kind of like, okay, cool, I got 360 millimeters worth of space I can deal with. It got three fan slots. But then you gotta start looking at the thickness of the radiator and then more importantly, the FPI in the radiator. So what the heck does FPI mean? And how do you accommodate that and work it into your systems? Well, let's go and talk about that today. Whether you're looking for a pump, reservoir, custom GPU block, or a complete loop in a box, AlphaCool's wide range of products can make your next water cooling adventure an easy one. Click the link in the description for more details. So in my hands right here, I have two pretty similar spec radiators in that they are both 240 millimeter uh, radiators, which means you can put two 120 millimeter fans on either side or both sides if you want. They both are 30 millimeters thick, uh, which means on the surface, they're gonna seem very, very similar in cooling capacity. They've also both got 12 rows of coolant flow going on in here. So what makes these two radiators so different? Well, it really comes down to the FPI or the fins per inch. Now radiators uh, have one job and one job only. That is to absorb the heat out of the coolant, moving through those rows and moving that heat into the atmosphere or exchanging that heat. Uh, it's happening through the movement of water, the fins in the rows are absorbing that heat and then the fans are pushing air through there, transferring that heat from the water to the air and then out to wherever the cooling situation is in your room. Because remember, that heat leaves the case and goes into the room. If you don't have room ventilation, then your room's just gonna get hotter and hotter and hotter. I think you guys have noticed that. But these two radiators are also very different in the fact that they have two different numbers of FPI as well as different types of fins. So that's what we're gonna focus on today. Now the AlphaCool Nexos ST30 right here uh, is an eight FPI radiator. Now what that means is that in one inch of space per row, there are going to be eight fins on here that are gonna be touching each one of these rows and transferring the heat into the atmosphere like I said. Now over here on the Nemesis GTS, uh, a 240 radiator. This is a 16 FPI, but not only is it 16 fins, it's also a split fin design. So what the heck does that freaking mean? These are the things that start to confuse a lot of newbie builders when it comes to water cooling selection. Cause you're really gonna be wondering to yourself, do I need 8 FPI? Do I need 16 FPI? Do I need 20 FPI? Cause I mean, there are 20 and greater FPI radiators out there. In fact, the uh, Swift Tech Extreme is a 20 FPI radiator. Uh, so you have to really start asking yourself, what do you need in your system? What are you cooling? Now on the surface, both of these radiators will perform very, very similar if you are cooling things like just a CPU. In fact, you might see very little, if any difference in temperatures whatsoever. Now the difference that FPI plays is the amount of capacity that the radiator is gonna be able to dissipate because what these fins are actually doing is adding surface area to the radiator. Now, not only can you get more surface area for cooling by having a longer radiator, but also by having more fins crammed into that radiator. So what that means is this Nemesis GTS with its 16 FPI split fin design is going to be able to handle a greater load generally than an eight FPI standards fin uh, would be right here with the Nexos ST30. Now you can kind of see too, as I hold them up right here in front of the monitor, how easy it is to see through this radiator. You can see just how wide those fins are. If I hold the GTS up here, you're still gonna be able to see through it, but you notice how you can't really see quite as much through there. You can kind of get an idea of just how close together those fins are. Now there's gonna be trade-offs to this. That means if you're running smaller cases, you can run fans that have greater FPI and are gonna allow you to be able to get better cooling if you're adding multiple components to it. If you're just going with a standard CPU and you're not adding a GPU or multiple GPUs or even doing a lot of overclocking, then you could get away with a low FPI radiator. Some of them are even advertised as sub eight fin, which means less than eight fins. They don't actually say how much. You can measure that yourself and account for it pretty easily. I've seen some go as low as six, uh, but you're not gonna see much difference because the overall uh, amount of TDP that this radiator can dissipate uh, is going to be greater than the load being put on it, if that makes sense. So what that means is regarding of the, regardless of the FPI, the cooling capacity of both these radiators would be greater than cooling something like your average 6700K 
or something of that nature because the amount of watts having to be cooled in heat is less than the radiator can handle. Now where it starts to matter is when you start to add more and more components like you have here with Skunk Works. Three of these Titan X's is being cooled by one of these radiators in a 560 millimeter equivalent, which is four 140 millimeter fans, as well as a 280 version of this, and it puts a lot of heat into the room. Now, one of the things that FPI really comes into play is noise, not just the amount of cooling that you can do with the radiator and the amount of headroom that you have in terms of TDP, uh, but what's gonna be happening here is you are gonna have more fins which is gonna mean you need higher static pressure and higher RPM fans to push the air through it, especially if you start to get thicker and thicker radiators. Lower FPI radiators are perfect for those that are looking for a much quieter solution. You don't need nearly as much headroom for overclocking or uh, water cooling. You could easily cool a CPU and a GPU off of a single 360 millimeter uh, you know, ST30 or even an ST45 and have no problems whatsoever. In, in the alpha cool language, the ST um, number is referring to the thickness. So you've got ST30, ST45, ST60, and ST80 are like the monster rad, which is freaking huge. But what that means is I can put a slower speed fan on this radiator and have plenty of air moving through it versus putting a slower speed fan on this radiator and I would have a lot less efficiency in the amount of cooling because having all these fins won't do any good if I'm not properly pushing air through the damn thing. So what that means is more noise because as the air is going through these fins, there's gonna be more turbulence, that air which is gonna be wanting to go off at an angle. If you guys have ever seen the way that uh, smoke blows through a fan, it doesn't blow straight up, it blows out at an angle at the same degree at which the deflection of the fins are against the air. So air goes through the fan and comes sideways out of it usually or diagonal. But these fins are going to re-straighten that air back out as it goes through the radiator. So that's gonna create some sort of noise turbulence. These right here having a wider set fin means that there's gonna be more room in there for that air to make that turn and it's not gonna be bouncing as much off the walls of the fins or creating that very choppy air noise that you can get with radiators. Now that's a common misconception a lot of people have with water cooling is that it is dead silent. Well, it can be. It can be dead silent, but that means that you're gonna to have to run as big of a surface area as you can at the lowest FPI that you can so that you can get away with very slow speed fans, but you need a lot of them. Split fin designs are actually not about getting more FPI in that space. It's more about the durability of the fins because they're not as long and they're not going to be as fragile or have as much opportunity to get something down in there and smash them. So they're actually a lot stronger. Uh, I would definitely recommend a split fin radiator if you can swing one. They tend to be a little bit more expensive. They're more expensive to produce and manufacture because there's extra tooling and manufacturing going in there. Uh, but at the same time, I do like the structural rigidity you get with the core, the rows, and the fins on there. But when it comes to cooling, you're generally not going to notice a whole lot of a difference between these two and still, until you start reaching the thermal limits of the radiator. So the recommendation is still to always get the biggest radiator that you can fit in terms of number of fans. If you've got a case that's got three 120 millimeter exhaust fans on the top and you can fit the distance you need before you hit the motherboard or the drive cages to fit a 360 up there, by all means do it. Uh, same thing with the front of the case. If you're putting a front mounted rad on there and you've got room for a 240 or even a 280, do it because having more surface area means, like I said, you can make it quieter by slowing down the fans and keeping things much more acoustically pleasing, if you will. That's one of the reasons why you don't really hear Skunk Works in my videos, even though I'm sitting right next to it. Um, and not just because I have a lav mic, but because of the fact that I'm running massive radiator surface area with fans that are only running at 50%. So it keeps things nice and quiet. Not to mention it helps a lot with dust and stuff. You're not getting as much forced dust in there. Um, that is one thing to also keep in mind too when it comes to high FPI density um, radiators is the fact that there's a smaller space in there which makes it easier for dust to collect. So you're gonna definitely wanna keep these things as clean as possible. Now, one last thing I want to address is I've seen some people refer to FPI as uh, kind of a linear number, meaning this thing having 16 and this thing having eight means this can cool twice as much. That's not true whatsoever. It's just a different design when it comes to physics and the way that the air and the heat is transferring or exchanging the heat out of the radiator into the air. 
uh, it's not a linear curve by any means. It tends to taper off quite a bit as FPI increases rather than getting steeper. It tends to taper off quite a bit where it's not going to give you that linear 8 FPI is half of 16. It just doesn't work that way. Anyway, guys, I hope this video has helped you. I know it's more of a, just a talking head video. I'm still preparing for some builds that I'm gonna be doing. I'm still dealing with unpacking a lot of stuff. And it seems like every time I get the shop arranged how I want it, something comes along that makes me have to move things around or take up space. And it's just taking me longer to get that going. But I hope this video has at least helped you guys understand um, one additional stat when it comes to radiators and how to shop when it comes to building your custom loops. Again, I still highly rely on you guys to help me understand what co topic content you guys wanna see, especially when it comes to the niche topic of water cooling. So let me know what you guys want me to do in things like Twitter comments or Facebook messages or just the comments here on this video. Anyway, time to go. What radiators are you guys using? Did I miss something? Do you think there was something important here I should have mentioned that I neglected to do? I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. I neglect to do things all the time. Gets me in trouble with the wife too with the amount of things that I accidentally neglect to do. And that's not a sexual joke. I guess you could sort of take it that way, but it wasn't intended to be that way. All right, I'm gonna get out of here before I put my foot any farther in my mouth. And with that, thanks for watching guys and I will see you in the next video.